Hallelujah. Glory to God. We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Reverence to the peace of the Lord. I invite those at this moment to stand up. Psalm number 40. Verse 2, 3, and 6 it says the following. Psalm 40, verse 2, 3, and 6. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Now verse 6. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. And here there is a, a little divergence here because of because of translation depending on the version, the biblical version. It's saying here, sacrifice and offering you didn't want. My ears you didn't, you opened. But in another translation it says, my ears you pierced. And uh, Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 15. Fifteen, Deuteronomy fifteen, verse. He didn't say. He didn't. And then you take. Um, and then you pierce your ears at the door, and your servant will be yours forever. And we'll do this according to your servant. Lord, we praise you to glorify your holy name, because all the benefits that you have given to our lives for the service that was provided by you, which was a blessing. Which one, which person who are here, Lord? We ask that you are you bless your word and uh, fulfill your plan in our midst. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The psalmist, he expresses to the Lord. And there's a song. I'm sorry, there is a song. Oh, the praise group is going to sing a song.
it, it distracts me. Yeah. Glory to God. There's another verse in the Bible that says the following. Who is it that from the dust, from the clay, rises up humble, and from the garbage rises up the needy? It makes him sit down with, as a prince of his people, makes the sterile woman be a joyful mother of children. Who can do this? Who is doing this? And the psalmist, he expresses all his love and all his gratitude because he found in God all those things, all those resources. So then he uses now what God made available to him so that he can offer, so he can praise and adore the Lord for what God had done in his life. And at a determined, there's a, a specific psalm that says, what, do I give, what will I give to the Lord for all the benefits that he has given me? And the psalmist in this psalm, he says the following, I am poor and needy. But he also says, But the Lord takes care of me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How good it is, my brethren. The poor is the one who doesn't have many resources, has almost nothing. And the needy is someone that is always needing someone or someone or something to help. But he says here that God, he provides to all our needs. And God takes care of him. My brother and sister, there's nothing better do than to be taken care of by God. If there is someone that can take good care of man, it's God. And he says the following. For my helper so how many times you are we are in need of a helper of a support of, of a help and the psalmist also finds in this God his God all his necessity is found in his God and maybe you entered here in the house of the Lord feeling like you need a help you need a support. And the Lord God is here present to help you, to give you the assistance to supply to all our ne your needs. And he, the psalmist also said one another thing. He is my deliverer. How many people are not today? How many of us are today are imprisoned to thoughts, feelings, and even bad things like actions, uh, addictions, problems, difficulties, adversities. 
but the psalmist says that God is his deliverer. There's a text in the Bible that says, if his son, referring to Jesus the son, if he frees you, you truly be free. So there is a deliverance that is complete. It breaks uh, shackles and prisons and opens up for man all the doors. And then he says, he speaks of the situation in which he was in a specific moment of his life. And sometimes we need to make this reflection. What I was before, what was before I met God, when I was wandering the world, slaved. And he speaks of the place in which he was found by God. He said that God is his support, God is his deliverer. He said also that he was poor and needy. And he says in this text that we just read, of a place where he once was. He said that I was in a terrible lake. My brother and sister, I don't know if you have had the opportunity, I believe, I um, hope not. Has anyone here entered in a, a terrible lake? I can imagine a terrible lake, a, a horrible lake, a muddy place. So we can imagine that that person was not living a, a very comfortable life. A life that could say comfortable and easy because the place was terrible. But it's not ugly because ugly, I am ugly, <laughs> but it's terrible. <coughs> what a terrible place was that we can imagine because it could have been a place where I might go to. Sometimes we don't speak about uh, a message that is too heavy. But the Bible says that we were all condemned. The wage of sin is death. When man dies out of the presence of the Lord, man goes to that place, to this terrible lake. And the Lord says that that man says that God rescued him from there. And we can tonight glorify the Lord because the Lord has taken each one of us away from this terrible place. And says, my brethren, he said, he took me but kept uh, giving me support. I could have uh, rescue someone from a terrible place, a, a place where this person may have been uh, suffering threat to his life in place him here. My mission would have been done, then I will continue with my own life. But here, the God we're speaking of tonight, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he dies in the cross of Calvary, the Bible says that he went down to the Hades and he took captive uh, the, the prison and gave life to men. And the Bible says that he death was swallowed by victory in this terrible place. In order to take us away from there, in the sentence of condemnation, the Lord Jesus paid the highest of the prices. He paid for it with his own life. He paid for it with his own blood. And he has not abandoned us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because after 
doing all of it to save each one of us. The Bible says that He resurrected. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In order to do, you know what, my brother and sister, to strengthen our steps over the rock. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the lake, man was stuck there, muddy lake. If you, if you steps, if you step in, inside of a muddy lake, you get stuck there. And sometimes our spiritual life is like that. We are sank. We are sank into sin. But God goes there, and through His strong hand, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, He rescues us. And the Lord says that He, the Bible says that He, strengthens our feet on the rock. And who is the rock? It's Jesus. So then we see that Jesus is always present, present in the process of salvation of the life of man. And says the following: He strengthened my steps. I no longer will walk uh, in a, an uncertain way, losing my direction. Because from now on, He gave me sh strong steps, so now I have security to walk. Because no, lo um, now I left the terrible lake, and I, I walk to a project and a plan that God has set up for my life and he put a new song in my mouth when he speaks of song he speaks of praise and adoration and joy and many times before this when man is in the lake a muddy lake man doesn't have the means or pleasure I'm, I'm missing the word. Um, almost it. Um, that he doesn't have the desire to praise the name of the Lord. Once Israelites, they were instrumentalists like the brethren here. They have left their country of Israel. They were taken to Babylon. And these people in Babylon, he kept asking them, sing a song of Zion. But in their situation, spiritually speaking, there was in such a difficult situation, they, they answered, how can we sing the song of the Lord in foreign land? We have no reason to adore, to glorify the name of the Lord. But here he has, the psalmist had reason, because God saved him, because God rescued him, God strengthened his steps, because God revealed for him a new and living path. And that's what God has done with each one of us. He has rescued us, He has saved us, strengthened our steps, have given us a new direction, a new objective to our lives. So then comes a moment in which the psalmist says, sacrifices and offerings you didn't want. Sometimes you may think, the Lord has done so many things for me, for my life. What can you give to God in retribution to everything that has done for my life? He took me out of the muddy uh, lake. He strengthened my steps. He put a new song in my mouth. He has been my help, has blessed me, has my garden, my guide. God has done so many things for me. What can I give as a retribution? I will do for God a sacrifice. Many times you think like that. And many people to this day, they think like that and act in this way. They want to offer sacrifice. And somebody may think, oh, sacrifice is too difficult. I'm going to give an offering. But the psalmist, he says the following, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. You know, my brother and sister, why? Because the offering is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it was given by God for each one of us. There's a verse that says the following, 
because a child was born, a son was given to us. So the offering, it was God who gave to each one of us. There's no greater and more perfect offering than His own Son for love for our lives. That's why it's written that God loved the world in such a way that He made this offering. He gave this benefit and this gift of having the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and sacrifice. Is there a greater sacrifice than the one made by, by Jesus Christ? So my offering, my sacrifice, they are insignificant. They have no worth for God because God gave the greatest offering and made the greatest sacrifice in favor of our lives. And he says also, my ears you pierced so interesting in the middle of the psalm he is, speaks of this that God pierced his ears so maybe for you and I who may be listening to us may not understand clearly what that means but if there is a Jew here he will know what that means to pierce the ears there is a law, that, which is in the book of Exodus and also in Deuteronomy. Exodus and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, Exodus 21, 1 to 6, and, Exodus, and Deuteronomy 15, verses 15, 16, and 17. It was the law of the servant. And in the law of the servant, if someone was purchased or rescued, you, for example, belong to a one Lord. And someone else went there and purchased you from that Lord. You were slave. Now you no longer belong to that Lord. And now you serve this new Lord. And the person that was purchased had the obligation of serving his new Lord, the one who rescued him and saved it and purchased his life for six years. So for six years, he had the obligation of serving his Lord. But after six years, on the seventh year, was the year of that person's independence of freedom and it could now say two things first ask what, it, what was his take what was his and go away so if he entered alone he would live alone but if he entered with his wife and children he would live with wi wife and children but if he had come to conclude the conclusion that that the period in which he spent in the house of, of his Lord was a period in which he was well treated he was respected when he was supported he was helped where he was well taken care of he could then make a decision, make a choice. He now had free will. Before, he had no free will. But now, on the seventh year, he had free will. He could choose to go away or then to remain forever in the house of his Lord. But in order for him to remain in the house of his Lord. He had to tell his Lord, I love my Lord. If he, ha if he has wife and children, 
You say, I, w I don't want to go away, I want to remain here, and want to stay here forever. And when he made this decision, so then his Lord would take him to the gates of the city, and at the gate, or under the gate of the city, he would put his right ear against the side of the wall, if, and he would bring with a piece of wood with a nail on the tip. And then he would pierce that person's ear. And that was a sign that he would serve his Lord for as long as he li lived. And, for, and now, you no longer serve his Lord as an obligation, but you serve his Lord for love and gratitude. And that's what the psalmist does, the, does here. The Lord has done so many things for me. He took me out of the lake. He, he rescued me. He supported me. He blessed me. I know the sacrifice he doesn't want. He doesn't want offering. Why would God want money? God doesn't want plane. He does, God doesn't ride on helicopters or cars. Why would God want this? Because he, if He is God, He is the owner of everything. So material goods are of no worth to God. There's a verse that says, Give my son your heart. And that's exactly what the servant was doing at that moment. He was giving his life to his Lord. God gave his son for love of our lives. And the only thing that you can do is to give your life back to God, your life back to your Lord. We were slaves. We were all slaves to sin. We, all of us. Every man who were born or on the face of the earth, beside Jesus, were slaves to sin. But one day, the Lord God, through Jesus, rescued us from the empire of darkness and brought us to His wonderful light. He took us from a terribly heavy yoke. And I know, and the same, you can think about uh, Egypt, when the people were uh, uh, slaves in the Egypt, and God brought them to your presence, to His presence. It is the same thing that God is doing to each one of us. He has done with many here. He rescued us from sin and bringing us to His presence. We are slaved to the world. We are slaved to sin. We are slaved to the enemy. But now we're slave to God. Apost the Apostle Paul, when he writes his letters to Romans, Philippians, Titus, Philemon, he says, Paul, servant of Jesus Christ. And in Philemon 1 1, he writes, Paul, prisoner of Jesus Christ. But he was servant of Jesus and prisoner of Jesus by choice, not by obligation. Because he realized that the only thing that he could give as retribution to everything that God had done in his life and his benefit was his own life. So there is a song that says the following, Come the Lord to my life. Come, I come Lord, my life to offer you. So you, my brothers and sisters, who are here with us, what would we give to God for all the benefits that He has done for our lives? We need to offer our own lives to Him. But this offering cannot be a, an offering by obligation. I serve the Lord because this is an obligation. And it's not... It's doesn't work out. We need to serve the Lord by love and gratitude. And recognizing 
that our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, He has done everything in order to reach our lives, to rescue our lives, to save our lives. And when man has this knowledge of and realize this, he is so grateful that he doesn't want to go away. So remember the, the ten leopard? The Lord cured all ten. All the ten lepers were uh, shackled to their disease, leprosy, all ten. But the Bible says that when one came back, that one didn't come back uh, by obligation. He came for gratitude. The Bible says that he came prostrated in the presence of the Lord and adored him. And the Bible says that he, he and the psalmist says that he pierced my ears. The Bible has shown that there's a woman that came to the house of the Lord to praise the Lord for everything that the Lord had done for her life. And in her understanding, her own human reasoning, she thought, I'm going to give what is most precious or greatest worth. But the Lord has shown that what He desired from this woman, that she offer to Him his her heart in gratitude for all the benefits that he has done for her life. And the psalmist says the following, My ears you have pierced. So from that moment onward, he had one identification. Whatever he passed by, they would say, There goes the servant. But his servant by gratitude, but not by obligation. And that's the difference, my brother and sister, for you and I, for each one of us, we're servants of the Lord, for gratitude, and by option, not by obligation, because we recognize that our God, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, has done everything for our lives. The only thing that I can do he started for my life to give my life to Him. Hallelujah.
Lord to God. Lord to God. Hallelujah. Lord to God.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The church will stand up. The servant does not stay forever at home. The one who serves the God by obligation does not remain on his presence. If you, my brother and sister, you who are here tonight, understood the project of God and recognize all the benefits that God has given to your life, we need to declare this to the Lord. Say, my Lord, you have rescued me for, for love of my life and I don't want to go away. I don't want to via, leave your house. I don't want to leave your presence. Once Jesus said, don't you want to go away? And then Peter answered, where will we go if you only you have life, words of eternal life? The servant understood that. I have no other place to go. I don't have a, a Lord who is better than you. There is no better house than the house of the Lord. There is no uh, table as plentiful as the table of our God. There is no greater joy than to be in the presence of our Lord of our God, of our Savior. I don't want to go away. The servant had to make this declaration in order for his ear to be pierced by his Lord. He needed to allow it. He needed to allow his Lord to pierce his ear. The Lord gave us free will to serve him or not, to be in his presence or no. But when we understand there is no better place than to be in the presence of God, then we ask God to put a mark on our lives, to pierce our ear, to show on my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord has brought you here tonight to put a mark on you so you can have the mark of the presence of the Lord. You can leave this place with a mark of, of the fire of the Holy Spirit burning in your life, burning your heart because you, in the same way as me and the church have understood because the, the best place to be is in the presence of our God. Amen. Lord, we praise you and give you praises to your holy name. We glorify, Lord, for our rescue, for our salvation for your zeal, for your care, for your love, for your grace, Lord, for a great and infinite mercy that you have given to our lives for the Holocaust and the perfect sacrifice for the blood of your Son, Jesus, that was shed on the cross of Calvary for love of our lives. We praise you and glorify, Lord, because we are a servant, Lord, and sheep of your flock, we praise for the service and for the people who are here. And we pray, Lord, that you may take care and deliver our lives every day and supply, give us supply to our own needs, Lord. Don't take us away from your presence. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and eternal consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. Now, you who entered here, if you desire a prayer for your life and a better understanding of what was done, the gift that was offered, stay wherever you are and raise your hand so we can identify you then Brad and are going to give you the proper assistance. We have service on uh, Wednesday and Thursday at 8. And even Tuesday, we have a service at 8. We have a doctrine service. All, all our service, anyone can participate. The Bible says that whoever comes to me, I'll never send away. You, 
you can always come because you always be welcome to the house of the Lord. Saturday, Saturday at 7.30 at night, Sunday morning, Sunday school at 10.30, and Sunday night, once again, 7.30. Amen. If you desire assistance, raise your hand, and, we, and we're going to give you the proper assistance.